Right, where do I start? Um, I've been asked to do a a vlog or a video diary um, of the fishing. Um, I was asked in November, um, and here we are towards the end of January. First time I've got the camera out of the bag, so apologies for that. You will have to forgive any dodgy camera work. Um, I really don't know how to operate it yet, but it's uh, it seems pretty simple. So hopefully it will improve as the weeks go on. Um, yeah, I won't bore you with the details of why I've not been out, um, but I've done hardly any fishing over the winter at all, which has been really frustrating, to be honest. It's been mild, isn't it? Been in lovely conditions. Uh, been in loads and loads of low pressure. Um, a lot of water as well. Um, <clears throat> the lake I was fishing th uh, through the early part of the autumn, actually, um, water levels were ever so low, um, and it has suffered. It's suffered a lot. Um, water levels are right down. Um, and it, uh, it still had algae in October. And I was doing right in October, actually. I had um, a couple of, couple of um, sessions, and I think I had uh, three fish um, on one trip. Um, and the other one, I think, had five. So, yeah, it was, um, it was fishing quite well. They were hungry. Um, water was really, really coloured. It does, that well, the whole area does suffer with, um, with algae quite badly. Most of the lakes in that area get an algae bloom. There's a lot of shallow water um, and they do tend to get a bit coloured in the summer um, but not coloured due to fish activity, just coloured due to algae. Um, and uh, there weren't any big storms particularly, it'd been, we'd had a lot a lot of rain but the algae just died off um, a bit late in the year really. Normally, my experience, that normally dies off sometime towards the end of the summer um, or even earlier on in the summer. Normally there's a big storm, kills the algae off, bang, the oxygen levels drop um and that's when uh when you know the fish can be in a bit of trouble you know a lot of the time you see them up on the top gasping for air um anyway very similar thing happened we didn't have the big storm but the algae did did die off on, in this water and um uh it uh yeah the fish the fish went through a really bad time they really struggled um so my last trip to the lake was um uh, I think it was oh, end of October. Yeah, end of October time. Um, it started off okay. Um, saw a few fish, a few of them cruising about um, on the surface. A little bit late in the year for that, but I've, you know, I've, I've caught them up out of there off the surface, right up into um, almost the start of November, like October the 31st, I think. I've caught surface fish from that, that lake. Um, being shallow. They are, you know, they're not that far off the bottom when they're on the top, so they, they do use the top quite a lot. Um, and it is a really cracking surface water, um, with some big fish in it as well. So I turned up, um, first thing I noticed was the clarity was there. There was a lot of, um, all the colour in the water it, it dropped out. I think it had probably been two or three weeks since my previous visit, maybe three weeks. And anyway, all that colour that was in the water was completely gone, crystal clear. Um, much nicer really from my point of view um can see the fish find them much easier um you know identify different ones um what have you it's just nice fish in clear water isn't it um and um I, the fish, it's it's um how do i describe it it's like two two lakes that are joined together by a couple of little channels basically um so you've got a causeway that runs down the middle. One side goes under a bridge and the other's just a, a gap. So there's two bits that the fish can move between the two. I found fish in both halves. Um, but I found um, one half a tiny bit deeper and um, do tend to get a, like, a slightly higher percentage of, of bigger ones uh, from there. Not that you, you know, they, they do move freely between the two parts. And sometimes you've got the vast majority of one, sometimes in the other half. But anyway, if I find them in both, it's um, I normally fish. In, in that part, it's um, it's nicer to look at as well, it's more aesthetic, there's a bit more room there, the swims aren't so tight, um, it's just, yeah, it's a nice, nice looking lake, looking out on an island. Um, anyway, so I've got myself set up in a swim that I've hardly really fished, I've only ever floated fished, I've never, never fished um, on the bottom in there. Um, caught one that night, um, or early hours of the following morning, caught a, it was 31 something, um, nice mirror, lovely, no issues, it fought fought hard enough um so nothing looked uh untoward there um i fine for the photos went back strongly um yeah 
all always looking good. Um, and then the following day, I noticed, um, well, well, that day, yes, yeah, after I put the fish back, um, I saw quite a few fish further up the bank, so it was obvious I needed to move. Um, so I was seeing them lot throughout the afternoon, and they do move around a lot on there. There's just um, there's bits that they move into during the day and then come back out at night, but they definitely had moved off from in front of me. So um, quite late on, really, I decided I was uh, going up sticks and move. Got my kit into another swim, um, and just got the rods out just before dark. So I got them out, got my lines down, got everything like fishing wise that needed to be right, um, and then I put my bank sticks in. And by now it's dark. Um, and in the beam of my head torch, I just noticed something just like um, something pale, just right in the margins in front of me. Um, so I had a look, and there was a fish there, um, just up on the surface. A little mirror looks about like 12, 14 pounds, something like that. Um, looked quite an old fish, to be honest. Uh, and then it, it just turned on its side. Uh, its gills were still going, but it was just laying on its side, didn't look very well at all. Um, and then I just watched it for a little bit and then it um, it brightened itself, went up and um then just like went right down near, down to the bottom. Um and then laid on its side again and just lay there. And, yeah, it didn't look very well at all. Um well, the best thing I could do was scoop it up, so I got it in the got it in the landing net and its gills were going uh, not very strongly, they were very slow, it didn't yeah, it didn't look didn't look good for it at all. Um so I phoned up the fishery manager. <laughs> Um, he just, well, he, he was, um, I think he was out of the country at the time, actually. He just said, do what you can for it. So um, I poured buckets of water over it, you know, not quite a lot of water, just to try and get some oxygen in, in the water around the fish. Um, but, yeah, he didn't make it. Um, and then the uh, following day, it was quite obvious that there were, there were some problems there. The oxygen levels had clearly crashed with all that, that clarity in the water, sort of like just... A, first clue to it um, a lot of fish on top um, they were obviously really really struggling and were, uh, yeah quite a few uh, quite a few fatalities really I think probably lost I oh, don't exactly know how many fish are in the lake probably were 200 in there I think I lost about a quarter of that stock so yeah very ever so sad um, and the lake's been shut shut for a long time and that was where I was planning to do a winter campaign um, not that I couldn't have gone somewhere else but anyway I've it's not it's not really happened um but on the bright side it um there have been a, a couple of fish coming out and a couple of good ones i think quite quite, quite a few of the ones that have gone have been the older better ones um but we shall see um you know there's some lovely fish in there and some old fish um and you know it's it's, it's one of those water spring stocks sort of you know with a few fish every year so there's, there's various ages um various strains in there um, but it is lovely and quiet. I actually went down there last week, um, and it was what day was it? Monday, Monday or Tuesday last week. Um, it was it was okay. It was quite cold, but it was it was nice, really nice. What I would say, nice winter fishing conditions. Um, uh, there's um, what well, there's three lakes there. Uh, one one lake had a couple of anglers on it. The other two, not a single person there. Um, and that lake normally is, it's not busy in the winter, not busy busy, it is at weekends, but it's, it is quite a popular water because it, it, it is a reasonable winter water. It's, you know, you've got to get it right, but you can, you know, you can catch them in the cold. I've, I've caught them out you know, when the lake's been half frozen. Um, and it is, yeah, it's a good winter water. Um, and absolutely empty. I think you know, a lot of people are, are thinking the worst and thinking that everything's gone, which clearly they haven't. Um, but, yes, yeah, um, yeah, it just looked, looked really, really nice, to be honest. Yeah, I was um, really hoping to get out last week. Um, and went out to my garage, sort of get out, and just, oh, what a mess. Just had a look at it. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of time. Um, I was only going to like, get one night in, and it didn't, no way was that going to happen. It's the Say the garage is a tip. I can get about four feet in um, from the front door, just about to get to the freezer. It's kit everywhere, and... I've got a lot of stuff to sort out out there, so um, it uh, yeah just it, it didn't happen. So if if I get a dry day next week, I'll sort that out. Um, Needs at least a day on it, I think. Um, and then hopefully after that, I'll uh, be able to get out on the bank. Um, 
So I'm not sure where I'm going to go. I will probably be going um, to the lake where the where the philosophy of the fish. Um, be interesting to see what's still in there. Um, uh, there's another lake next door to it though, where I've um, I've caught almost everything, but there are. There's probably four fish in there that I haven't. There's there's some smaller ones I haven't caught. There's plenty of the young stockfish I haven't caught, but of the of the big ones, there's three, maybe four that I haven't caught yet. Um, and a couple of those are really really nice. One I'm not I'm not that bothered about, but um, yeah, there's a there's a couple that are really really nice. There's a beautiful linear in there. Um, there's, there's forty pounds now. Um, real overslung mouth. Um, and it's old, it's it's a real, real nice old fish. Um, photographed it loads, of, well, I've said loads of times, probably four times for other people. Um, so, uh, yeah, not sure if my name's on that one, but it, um, it's a little bit more friendly now as well. It used to be once, maybe twice a season. Um, and now it comes out, well, it's probably been out four or five times this season. So, yeah, there's that one. Um, really really would like to catch that and there's um another one much plainer fish but oh the colour of it and the proportions of it is just yeah it's just lovely lovely called the porno fish that one the second one so yeah either of those i would be really really happy to catch so i may um may end up dabbling on there a little bit or maybe going between the two i don't know i don't know so well uh, as i've got older i do tend to um fish more where the mood takes me and just you know go go where I feel like going rather than um like you know like fishing the water relentlessly week in week out um I used to do that a lot and I've, I've really enjoyed doing it but um certainly for the winter I'm more inclined to fish somewhere where I think I've got a chance of getting a bite so um we'll see we'll see where I end up yeah so next week I will be definitely out on the bank um i would have gone this week but zwolla um i'm going to zwolla tomorrow um meeting up at gardener hq at seven in the morning um and then we'll be traveling to europe through the tunnel so that should be a laugh um uh, meet up with lewis and james uh we do a few quizzes along the way it's gonna be quite strange really because um we'll still be in europe when we go um, but when we come back, we'll be out of Europe. So yeah, that'd be interesting. Um, I've got everything ready. I've got my uh, new passport. I've got new euros. I've got um, Dutch phrase book. Really looking forward to it. To be honest, it's good fun. Um, meet up with a load of guys. Um, the gardener um, Ben Lux team um, that I met last year. Um, yeah, good crack. Real, real nice lads. They are. So that should be fun. Um, you might even get to see them on this. Who knows? Be taking the camera with me um so that'd be good i do i like going to zwolla to be honest if i could only do one show for the whole year that would be it um real good crack the whole town gets a, a vibe of carp anglers it's you know bars are full of fishermen um and it's, it's really good to meet up with my european friends who i haven't seen for a year or at least a year um and some of my english friends as well to be honest there's um, a lot of people that over here that i fished with or know that i, I don't see you know, don't even see it at our shows, but you know, see some of them in uh, in Holland. So really looking forward to that. Looking forward to some good food. Um, it's a centre for good, decent restaurants out there. Um, a lot of Michigan style restaurants as well. Not that we've eaten those, but we yeah, some some nice nice restaurants out there. Um, and yeah, looking forward to a good crack with a few mates. So that should be good. Um, hard graft will be um, yeah. Let's say meeting up at seven in the morning. We've got to drive all the way to Holland, which is. There's a good old good old trek. Um, set up and then uh, yeah, I think it's a three day show now, so we'd set in Friday, Saturday, Sunday, come back Monday morning. So I will get back um yeah, probably Monday, Monday evening by the time I get back. Um I have a recovery day Tuesday. Um so hopefully Wednesday next week I will be um on the bank. So we'll see how that goes. Here we are, European road trip, if only. Um, off to Zwolle for the Zwolle show. There he is. Cute. Oh, young James here. Oh, oh, zoom oh. out. <laughs> young James looking, <laughs> looking handsome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> very, very nearly. Let's go, go on. 
Oh man, that is. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, we survived it. No, uh, fuck you. Bit of poo and we came out. <laughs> Just with a look at the Ferris driver. <laughs> hey, we're not dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, mother. <laughs> right, so after that near miss, um, we'll get back to our trip. We are on the way to Zwolof. Um, had a decent crossing, actually. The uh, run down to the tunnel's fine. A lot better than last year when the M25 was shut. So hopefully we'll be there in plenty of time to get set up. Um, and even more importantly, plenty of time to get back to the accommodation and crack open a few bottles of beer. We're a little way into our trip now, uh, going through Belgium. We've just taken a detour. Um, only had one minor incident so far. Um, anyway, we've taken this detour to save a bit of time. And we're just uh, going alongside this lovely looking canal. Nobody fishing it though, it doesn't really look like there's any swims on it. Mind you, it's uh, right next to the dual carriageway, so maybe there aren't any swims. I bet there's some fish in there. <coughs> in about half an hour, we will be coming up to what's well, it's got to be the biggest water I've ever seen. Um, you know, people think that we've got some big lakes. This is like an absolute inland sea. Um, I've got, actually got maintenance fishing on there. Fishing a tiny little arm, which is bigger than anywhere I've ever fished. Um, so yeah, massive challenge to fish there. Um, and when we get to it, I will try and get a little bit of footage of it so you can see it. As part of our little trip, James, I'm um, going to offer you a little challenge due to your excellent um, Dutchman impression. I'm going to ask you to, over the weekend at some stage, pass yourself off as a Dutchman to an Englishman. Okay. Somebody you don't know, obviously. Um, but the whole the whole time you speak to him, you've got to speak to him with your Dutch accent and never let on that you've got to keep this up the whole weekend. Yeah, it should be quite easy to do, you know. Um, it's uh, a challenge that I um, am glad to see from you. It's good, yeah. Um, there's a lot of cops around What's here. What's this Dutch now? In the case. Uh, Jonas. 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 Jonas, yeah, Jonas. Jonas. Yeah, okay, this uh, is <laughs> a challenge <laughs> that I can, um, yeah, do this, this with you. Okay, Matthew. But now I've got to think of one for you. Okay. 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 Right, this is the inland sea that I was talking about. It's absolutely massive, and this goes on for miles and miles and miles. Make uh, the fish is it. fish is a tiny little line. Of that. You're not going to be doing a couple of circuits of that before you find your swim, are you? No looking for the fish. Oh. So, after a day on the road, we are here. Okay. All we've got to do now is set everything up. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the madness that is Carpswalla. Um, yeah, it's been quite busy this morning. Halfway through the day, we got uh, put here about half past four last night. Got set up, um, back to the accommodation, a mistake, something like that. Fairly sensible on the beer. So there we go. Hey folks, it's James. I've robbed the wonderful Matt's camera. This is Saturday at Zwolle. I know it's going to be a busy one. Captain Camp at the back there, down on ATT. All the lads have worked really hard yesterday. The show's gone down the storm. So, hello, Tom. And then we have the wonderful Mr. Eaton himself. He sharpened a few hooks yesterday. That's was interesting. Anyway, we're going to log out now because it's uh, just open the doors. See you soon. Uh, right, 
Right, okay, got back uh, yesterday evening from Swallow. Had a fantastic time over there, really busy, good to see some new friends. Um, sold lots of stuff. Um, yeah, fantastic trip, really. Uh, we didn't leave till quite late, we struggled getting up on the last morning, on Monday morning, stayed over Sunday night. Uh, Monday morning, we've had a lot of late nights, way too much to eat, way too much to drink, and it's uh, taking its toll a little bit. So there's no way I'm going to go fishing today. However, um, I will be getting my stuff ready and off tomorrow morning. Um, I had a call from a mate of mine to see if I wanted to go fishing for a couple of days, a bit of a social. I haven't seen him for, I haven't seen him for ages actually. Probably the last time we fished was oh, about 18 months ago. Um, so it will be a change to the planned venue. Um, where I'll be fishing a lake that I spoke about earlier, um, where I've only got a couple of fish to catch. Um, it's quite handy really having a, a couple in there, so it's a club water, not as cheap club water, so it's it's not a ticket that I really want to drop, but obviously it's no good once you've caught them all, so it is, um, it is nice to have some that I can go back for, so I can have the odd trip, um, so I'm not only fishing the fish I've caught before, which would be silly. Um, a couple of really nice ones actually, and I don't think they've been out for a while, lovely linear, um, and another one called the Porno Fish, which is um, proportionally, it's just absolutely spot on, beautiful colours on it. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that, should be good fun. Um, I've got, had a quick look at my stuff, um, or some of it, um, got everything on charge, all my power, torches, etc. Um, and now I've got the mammoth task of the garage. Um, I'm not going to be sorting it out today, but I will have to sort some, make some semblance of uh, normality out of my gear because it's all uh, it's all in there and it's uh, yeah, it's a mess. So I'll be getting on with that this afternoon and um, catch you in the morning when we're off. Well, I'm really looking forward to going fishing in the morning despite uh, the weather forecast. It's going to get a bit cold. It's been mild all weekend, cold for the next few days. However, um, I haven't had the rods out for a bit, so uh, looking forward to it. Um, I did say that my tackle shed had got untidy and I was going to have to have a bit of a sort out before I could go fishing again. Um, I also remember saying that I was going to show you what I was up against. So let's see what's going to keep me busy for the next few hours. Oh dear, right. I've got about four foot that I can step into there. That's it for floor space. Uh, I've got this mountain of gear. Um, I'm really going to have to crack on with this. There's not much uh, daylight left, so I need to get sorted. Um, so hopefully we'll catch up in the morning. All right, believe it or not, I'm actually fishing. Um, I've not got the rods out yet. Uh, just waiting uh, for a little bit. The swans are in the area and it's uh, shallow water here. So, well, most of the lake's shallow. So I'll wait till they've gone before I put them out. Everything's ready to rock, uh, fresh rigs on hook sharpened. Um, I got down uh, about half past one this afternoon. Uh, my mate Paul, who I'm on the social with, he was here about half eleven. Uh, maybe a bit before that. So he's already set up. He's not seen anything, uh, and I didn't on the circuits that I did. However, um, not, not any definite fish. I saw a couple of possible shadows, but I don't really think they were. Um, as I, uh, after having a chat with Paul, uh, I just thought I'd, I'd do one more circuit and in front of him, it wasn't visible from this bank, um, but from banks at 90 degrees facing into the sun, um, I've just made out some bubbling, so that's really encouraging. Um, I do like to bubble on this lake, it's one of those sort of, one of those sort of waters, uh, silty bottom, um, and that's your major sign on here, you don't see a lot of fish showing off and it's... It's just patches of bubbles coming up, so that's that's a really encouraging sign. So I'm more than happy down here. Um, there's been a little bit of a change in the weather forecast. Not going to be as cold as uh, they were predicting yesterday. Um, it's still fairly high pressure, but it's not um, it's not going below zero. We should probably get about four, maybe five degrees overnight. So that's that's a good sign. Um, and hopefully we'll have a little bit of sun. If we get some sun, there's every chance they'll uh, that the fish will head down the lake from the, there's a rig bed that they often uh, shelter in um, but they do like to use this shallow area starting down the middle and in this corner that I'm in uh, when the sun's out so hopefully we'll have a bit of sun tomorrow um, yeah that's it so I'm going to crack on get the rods out get them sorted and 
open a bottle of wine. Right, I've got the rods out. Uh, just managed to do it just before it got dark. Um, left hand one is out of shot, actually, you can't see where that is, but it's, it's round to the left, uh, quite close in, about 15 yards out. Um, there's a glowing clear spot there, and it's, it's an area where they really like to get when the sun gets up in the winter. Um, hopefully we'll have a bit of sunshine in the morning, might get a visitor or two down there. Um, middle rod is probably about 40 yards, it's um, just past where that swan is. Um, I was quite surprised to find a lot of weed out there actually, nice fresh green weed, so um, yeah, that's quite encouraging. We just haven't had any frost to kill it off really, or very few. Um, and I'm going to put some bait around that once that swan's gone. I can see it's going to be a bit of a nuisance. Uh, right hand rod, I've uh, gone a little bit longer on that. There's uh, a real nice shallow strip down the centre of the lake. Um, and then, again, that's another area where they do like to um, visit when it's uh, when it's warm, sunshine. Uh, they, they tend to get out and about. Uh, I don't know if you, you probably can't see it in the shot, but um, right quite a long way out let's try and zoom in and see if we can get it through <coughs> uh, yeah you can just about see it <coughs> there's some reed beds you probably can't actually see what they are but you can make out as a pale strip down the middle um, and that's that's a, a big reed bed that they spend quite a lot of time in, in the winter they often sit in there and then you get a bit of sunshine and they often then just move out of the reeds uh, and down the centre of the lake where it's really shallow and obviously warms up really quickly uh, it seems to be a big draw for them so I've got one one rod on that that's going to stay on a single the other two are going to get a little bit of bait on them but uh, not too much um, so there we go we'll see what the night brings uh, and maybe have a move in the morning right I've done my first night um, Throughout the evening, there were a couple of bats flying about, um, and the forecast said it wasn't going to get too cold, so it was looking really nice. Um, saw a possible fish as well, a uh, little to the right of my uh, right hand rod, but not far. Um, maybe maybe 10 yards off off me. <clears throat> so that was encouraging. Um, no occurrences. Just a couple of random bleeps, maybe yeah, possibly liners. Um, through the night. Uh, other than that, no occurrences. Pleasant evening. <coughs> uh, but we possibly will have a move today. Don't know. See what I see this morning. Um, it feels like I'm in the right area and having seen one show, show close and a little bit bubbling yesterday, it wasn't far off. Uh, yeah, possibly we will stay put. I'll need something to move on. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what uh, the day brings.
I've just had a little uh, walk around the lake, um, see if I was missing out on anything. Uh, did see one possible about halfway up, um, but encouragingly I have seen a little bit of bubbling this morning, one of them right in front of me, probably 10 yards short of my rods. So I think I'm going to stay put. Um, sun's been out, it's gone away now for a little bit, but I think it's going to come back out later on. And there's a beautiful uh, southeasterly kicked up. Not too strong, but it is pushing right into the corner that I'm fishing, so that's uh, that's a really good sign. They do like an easterly on here for some reason. One of the only places I've ever fished where they do, but um, yeah, it's uh, looking quite encouraging. It's um, felt quite spring-like really throughout the whole session. It's been a really mild winter and it's, yeah, it's a bit odd. Um, quite a lot of fresh green weed out in the lake. Um, swans have been coming in and feeding on that, not picking me up at all, even though um, a couple of rods, at least two of them, are in swan depth. Um, there's a lot of, lot of fresh green weed out there. Um, and, you know, the banks look quite spring-like. There's uh, primroses out and some crocus. Uh, a lot of the trees are in bud and got fresh leaves on them. Uh, yeah, it just it feels... It, it feels a lot earlier, a lot, sorry, a lot later in the year than it actually is. It's, it's like the first week of February. Um, and, you know, it, it's, the bank size looks like it does in March. So, uh, yeah, you never know. Hopefully the lake's going to really uh, wake up early this year.